Hi, everyone. My name is Mohammed Abdullah, and my principal investigator is Dr. Robert Schroth. And today I would like to share the findings of my uh, summer research project with you all. My project is titled The Influence of Taste Preferences and Feeding Practices on the Presence of Early Childhood Caries. I would like to begin today's presentation by explaining the term early childhood caries, often abbreviated as ECC. ECC is a complex and multifactorial chronic disease that affects children under six years or 72 months of age, and that is defined by the presence of one or more decayed, missing, or filled teeth in the deciduous dentition. ECC can be influenced by both biological and socioeconomic factors. Uh, some salient biological determinants include genetic polymorphisms in the genes associated with taste sensation, um, differences in the morphology of the oral cavity, as well as differences in uh, children's salivary compositions, uh, pH buffering ability, and the flow rate of saliva. And some of the important socioeconomic determinants include uh, coming from a rural or low-income background, as well as having parents with limited knowledge of dental hygiene. Now, ECC is formed as a result of the metabolic activity of streptococcus mutans, as well as, as, sorry, as, well as other species of oral bacteria. Uh, now, when in contact with uh, dietary carbohydrates, uh, these bacteria produce uh, organic acids, such as lactic acid, that demineralize the enamel, causing caries to form. It is also important to note that ECC is preventable with proper nutrition and oral hygiene. Now, this study serves to investigate the association that exists between parent-reported children's taste preferences, parental feeding practices, and the presence of ECC. Taste preferences are a variable of interest as they have been influenced by both taste genetics as well as socioeconomic factors like food availability. And for this reason, they can be seen as a link between the biological and socioeconomic determinants of ECC. Additionally, they have been reported to start developing in utero, resulting in an innate yet modifiable preference towards sweet tasting foodstuffs. And feeding practices depend on the methods and behaviors used by parents when feeding their children. The purpose of this study is to understand uh, whether taste preferences towards specific foodstuffs and feeding practices influence the presence of ECC. And our study hypothesis is that parent-reported children's taste preferences for certain foodstuffs and certain parental feeding practices will be associated with the presence of this disease. Between April 2019 and July 2022, we recruited a convenient sample of 467 participants from the Children's Hospital Research Institute of Manitoba, abbreviated as CRIM, as well as Access Downtown, Mount Carmel Clinic, and the Misericordia Health Center. The parents and caregivers uh, of the children were guided through a questionnaire, and the data was stored using REDCap databases and analyzed using NCSS 2022 and 2023 versions of the software. T values smaller than 0 0.05 were considered to be statistically significant, and taste preferences for each foodstuff were then compared between study groups. As previously mentioned, our study comprised of 467 participants with a mean age of 45.7 months. 40% of our participants were caries free and 60% had early childhood caries. Additionally, 49% were male and 51% were female. Now the tables on the next few slides show comparisons for children's taste preferences between the caries free and ECC cohorts with variables of interest being highlighted by the red frames. Table one comparing taste preferences for sugary snacks show that a greater proportion of children with ECC show preferences towards candies and ice cream, while a smaller proportion of these children are not offered this sugary snack. On the other hand, 
a greater proportion of Carrie's free children uh, show a, an occasional preference towards honey, and a smaller proportion of these children uh, do not prefer to consume this foodstuff. Limited associations were observed for taste preferences towards all other um, sugary snacks between the ECC and Carrie's free cohorts. Uh, table two on this slide highlights uh, children's taste preferences for sugary drinks. And we see that children with caries generally show stronger preferences for soft drinks, as well as Kool-Aid and Gatorade on both a frequent and occasional basis. And a smaller proportion of these children are not offered these drinks. And while this trend was also observed for the frequent preferences towards uh, fruit juice, we see that, a, that uh, interestingly, a smaller proportion of children with ECC show an occasional preference towards this drink. And as there are no red frames surrounding any of the values on this third table that compares children's taste preferences for non-sugary foods, uh, this indicates that limited associate that limited differences were seen in the taste preferences between study groups. This next table presents the mean taste preferences score for each study group, where higher values of the score indicate a greater preference towards sugary foods. And we can see that uh, children with ECC have a higher mean taste preferences score, indicating a greater preference towards sweet tasting foodstuff. Table five shows us that carries free children have a lower mean snacking frequency and that a smaller proportion of parents of these children report that their uh, kids, kids snack frequently before going to bed. And lastly, a greater proportion of parents of children with ECC report adding sweeteners to their children's drinks across all the drinks that were observed in this study. Based on our results, we see that uh, taste preferences towards candies, ice cream, soft drink, fruit juice, Kool-Aid, and Gatorade are associated with the presence of early childhood caries. Now, these foodstuffs contain cariogenic simple sugars, notably sucrose and glucose, that can be easily metabolized by oral bacteria. And while the extent to which each foodstuff behaves as a risk factor for ECC varies, Parents should control their children's consumption of these cariogenic foods. Uh, and given that uh, children in both study groups showed similar overall preferences for biscuits and cookies, bread and pastries, jam and Nutella, chocolate, as well as the non-sugary foods, it is clear that taste preferences towards these foodstuffs show limited associations with the presence of ECC. Unlike any of the other sugary foods, a preference for honey was associated with the absence of ECC. And this may be attributed to a previously reported antimicrobial effect. We therefore encourage the use of honey as a spread and sweetener. And furthermore, overall taste preferences for sugary foods, often known as having a sweet tooth, are indeed associated with the presence of this disease. And based off of our feeding practices results, we saw that children with ECC generally snack more frequently in the day than carries free children, and a greater proportion of these children also snack before going to bed. These findings have been supported by previous research that has also yielded similar results. Lastly, we saw that a greater proportion of parents of children with ECC report adding sweeteners to their children's drinks. And while our study did not explicitly ask parents about the type of sweeteners that they used, only natural sweeteners such as carbohydrates are cariogenic, whereas artificial sweeteners such as aspartame contain no sugars and show no cariogenic properties. Now, please see all of my acknowledgements to whom I would like to extend my sincerest appreciation for their support in this study. Here are my references. And thank you all for listening to my presentation today.